Hello boys and girls, Lord Hawkeye here again. And today, we're talking about the top signs of a dead philosophy. Now, understand when I say dead, I don't mean it's gone, it doesn't exist anymore. I mean as in, it's a dead end as far as helping humanity progress goes. These are the philosophies that lost the debate, but you re refused to get off the playing field. How can you tell you might be in danger of subscribing to one? Here's some warning signs. First, refusal to acknowledge past failures. You know what would make me respect communists and socialists a lot more? If they said something like this. Okay, I understand that central planning has caused famines and all manner of suffering in the past, and I can completely understand why you'd have doubts about it. But, I've done some extensive research. Here's why it didn't work before, here's why it will work this time, and here's what we're going to do in the future to ensure that such tragedies are not repeated. But no! It's the usual no true Scotsman nonsense of THAT WASN'T TRUE SOCIALISM and all other manner of weak excuses. Folks, admitting the failures of the past does not discredit your ideas. Quite the contrary. Charles Darwin's theory of evolution still holds up today, but do you really think he got everything right the first time? The reason why it does hold up is because he had the self-discipline to recognize when he had gone wrong. Libertarians admit their errors too. We thought minarchism was the way to go with the establishment of the U.S. We thought we could compromise with the sadists. We were wrong. Tragically wrong. Restrained evil is still evil. We should have known better, especially with the examples of the British and Roman empires to work by. We thought we could use the political system to fix things. We were wrong again. Ron Paul and others like him were marginalized and given nothing even resembling a fair shake. The system is not designed to change. Ever. This gets even worse when you have groups whose official policy is, when it comes to members who do wrong, is to cover it up at all costs. Many of them are guilty of this. The Vatican is guilty of it. Government, especially their police and military, are guilty of it. Even the feminist and social justice people are guilty of it. When women or minorities do wrong, they scramble to cover it up or make excuses for them. This is a huge warning sign that you're on the wrong side, folks. Honesty and integrity. Tell the truth and act the truth, or stop wasting everyone's time. You can't be right by refusing to be wrong. It just doesn't work that way. Threats or appeals to emotion replace arguments. Moral condemnation is a very powerful tool. Just ask religion. When used properly, it can put a nice personal touch onto a well-made argument, such as, I oppose Social Security because it's immoral to forcibly extract wealth from your own children and grandchildren who never had a say in the matter. Most of us would never forcibly steal from others, especially our own family, so why would you in good conscience support the state doing it on your behalf? Where we run into problems is typified by the usual response to this. Oh yeah? Well you just want the poor people to die, don't you? Like there's just no other way to save up for retirement. Pathetic. I've had people make entire response videos to me, and all they say in the whole thing is that I'm arrogant, I don't care about the poor, or I'm some fedora-wearing rich boy who has to check his privilege. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Even if all that were true, what the hell does that have to do with whether or not my arguments are true or false? Nothing. They just think they can shame me into backing down by hurling insults. Even if they succeeded, it would change nothing about reality. Desperate tactics by desperate fools. Think of moral condemnation like a seasoning for arguments. It makes them more personal and it spices them up, but you don't make a whole meal out of it. Intolerance of dissent. If someone came up to me and said that he thinks the earth is flat, and I, in response, got angry and offended and demanded he be silenced. You tell me, how ridiculous would that be? If the mere fact that there exist people who don't agree with you constitutes an attack on your beliefs, how flimsy is the foundation of your beliefs, I wonder? I know there are lots of people who don't agree with me on all manner of things. It does not anger me, it does not move me in the slightest. People are free to peddle whatever nonsense they want. What I object to is the fact that just because some of them sucked up to the right people, they get to use force. That is where the line is drawn. Make no mistake. Let's all be perfectly honest with ourselves. Nobody's perfect. Everyone strays from the truth every so often. That's fine. It's all part of learning and growing as a human being. 
So when people of a certain idea engage in censorship, that can only mean one of two things. One, the idea is perfect, infallible, works for everybody. To question it would be a waste of time on everyone's part. Or two, those who preach it know on some level that it's bogus, but they don't want to be faced with that fact. I wonder which it is. You can see this on all the YouTube channels, blogs, and other sites where ideas like socialism, feminism, and statism in general are preached. If you say something they don't like, you're done. You'll be banned. Your thread will be closed. Ask questions that make them uncomfortable, you're done. You will be banned. Your thread will be closed. Here's a fun fact for comparison. Do you know how many people I have ever blocked from my channel? One. Why? Because he was flooding the comments in order to push everyone else's off the page. I.e., he was actively interfering with other people's ability to say their piece, and this was after repeated warnings from me. The only thing I will block people for is spamming threats or libel. People are free to disagree with me. You can even call me an asshole if you want to. I make no one guarantee you won't get a snappy retort for it, but you can do it. Now you tell me, who do you think is more secure in their beliefs? I mean, if they're not secure in what they preach, why should you take any comfort in it? All problems are reduced to one single, all-encompassing solution. What's the golden rule for protecting yourself from scams? If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. How many times have you heard the central planners go on about how if only people would throw away their selfish desires and work for the greater good, then all would be well? So we'd all get along if everyone thought the same? Well, sure, but what could be more boring than a world where everyone's the same? Have these people given any real thought to what they're preaching? It's not realistic, and we ultimately wouldn't want it anyway. People are not clay to be molded. They're individuals with their own individual issues. So any idea that preaches some one-size-fits-all solution to society's problems, either A, is selling you snake oil, or B, is far too clueless about the complexities of humanity to be of any real help in the matter. Now, of course, they like to think they can throw this right back at us and call us utopians. Never mind that you will never find an anarchist who says the world will be perfect without a state. I've never said it, and I know of no other anarchist who ever has. What we say is that we can't come up with real solutions to society's problems because we continue to cling to the false solution of statism. A man who's going the wrong way, but is convinced he's going the right way, will never find his destination. What makes anarchism different, I think, is that we're not demanding you change your entire outlook on life, submit to a higher authority, or invest in some wealth-sharing scheme. All we're asking is that you continue to do what you've always done in your everyday life. Just apply it universally, rather than make this political sphere where the rules don't apply. I think that's why capitalism stands on higher moral ground. A capitalist society can tolerate socialism, if you want to invest in some socialist commune, you can. Nobody will stop you, but you understand that you bear the risks of it. On the other hand, a socialist society absolutely cannot tolerate capitalism. This just goes back to intolerance of dissent. Those who know they are the best do not fear competition. It's only the pretenders who do. And finally, the core morality of the idea is no longer believable. How many times have you seen it in stories? The villain started with noble ideas, but lost sight of them as he, did, as he committed more and more atrocities in the name of pursuing it. This is why self-analysis is paramount. The acid test is simple. Look at what people say. Look at what they do. Do they match up? Feminism preaches equality, but is that in any way believable when you look at the policies they preach? They advocate prejudice, hatred, and indifference to men, and to women too, when they don't fit their narrative, and they support horrifically unequal laws and policies. Socialism claims to support equality, yet it gives one elite class the power to seize and distribute wealth as though it were their own. Again, that is horrifically unequal. And politics? Oh boy. Politics claims to enforce morality and peace, and yet time and time again, they're the ones constantly dividing society into warring factions so they can profit from the chaos. And really now, is anyone going to look me in the eyes and tell me that you think politicians are the best people to preach morality? Really?
be, you can practice what you preach and be wrong, but you can never be right if you don't practice what you preach. Uh, sorry if this got a little bit long and rambly, but I do hope you enjoyed it anyway. To those who believe in these things and are thinking about getting mad at me, I ask you to reconsider. Who should you get mad at? The people who lied to you about what they're really all about just to herd you around? Or the guy who respected you enough to tell you the truth, however uncomfortable it might have been? Think about it. Until next time, be aware and be wise.